Hello, tonight's night 14 in my nightly coding bat ritual. Um, I'm going to avoid the, the typical pre-ramble now, but um, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to send me any questions. Tonight we're going to look at the problem front times in warm-up 2, and I'm looking at the Java solution in this case. Let's start by reading the problem. Given a string and a non-negative int n, we'll say that the front of the string is the first three chars, or whatever there is, if the string is less than three. Return n copies of the front. And we can see from the examples here, so if I have front times chocolate 2, we get two CHOs put together. Chocolate 3, we get three CHOs put together. And if we have ABC 3, we get three ABCs put together. Now this problem really has two parts. Long language. <laughs> Part 1 is accessing the first, first three characters. And part two is constructing the string to return. And we have to use, use a loop for this. Now, I'm going to show you what I think is a nice little shortcut here, or just a nice little alternate way. But let's first make sure we understand something really important. And in my Python video, I explained this. If I do something like string front is equal to str.substring, 0, 3 to grab the first three characters, and then I return front, which is obviously not correct. You'll notice that it works sometimes, but in other cases I get, well, sorry, we don't get the right answer, but it doesn't crash sometimes, but we get these index out of bounds issues. So unlike Python, Java will give you an index out of bounds problem if you try and access the first three, well, if you try and access index that don't exist. So what we have to do here is we have to actually do an, use an if statement to check. So I'm going to say if um, str.length is less than 3, then front is just going to be equal to whatever's in str. Else front is equal to str.substring 0, 3. And now if I return front, just to kind of see what happens, you can see here that I'm getting the first three characters every time when there's three or more, but in the cases that there's less than three characters, I get just what is there. And I, once I'm finished the solution, I'm going to come back and show you an interesting way to kind of condense this down. But let's actually just wrap this problem up first before we do that. So the next thing I have to do is I have to actually create a loop to go through string construction here. So I have to write a loop that's going to run n times. Now, in my last video from the other night, um, where we did the, the problem that was very similar to this, where we kind of took, I think it was called string times, we just made n copies of the string. I talked about how to do it with a for loop, a while loop, or a do while loop. But here's the thing. In this case, your best choice is a for loop. And kind of a little rule to follow is that if you know in advance how many times a loop should run, use a for loop. It, it actually is just a nice little little trick to remember. It makes your code a little bit easier to implement. If you don't know how many times the loop's going to run in advance, a while loop or a do while loop is actually better. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a string called result. Oop, result. And I'm going to make that set that to an empty string. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a for loop. i is less than n. i is equal to i plus 1. And... Inside this for loop, tap that in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say result is equal to the result plus the front. Now again, I can't stress this enough. Going and practicing this for loop until it just becomes second nature about how to write a for loop to loop a certain number of times is so important. Students will often say to me, what should I memorize? What kind of problems will you ask me? And I, I have to respond. I, I can never tell you all the different types of problems I can I can. I could ever give you, but what you do want to memorize is, is how to actually write a for loop and understand how to manipulate it to run a certain number of times. And so we come down here and we're just going to return result. And I hit go, and there they are. They all work. Remember with the for loop, this is my count, so that's where my, where my counter starts, and my counter's i. This is my check, so I want to go as long as i is less than n, and this is my change. So the way a for loop works is when I first enter a for loop, I set i to 0 and check 
is i less than n. And if that's true, then we enter loop. Then when we get to the end of the loop, what happens is we do two things. We say i is equal to i plus 1. So that's the change we talk about. And then we check that condition again, and we say is i less than n. And if it's true, we repeat loop. And if it's false, we continue on. Okay, now let's just take a moment and kind of play around a little bit with this this statement up here because actually you can you can this is a fun way to show an example of just doing this in a slightly different way. So I'm going to delete all of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. Um, I'm going to call it int len, and I'm going to set math dot min. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check what's the minimum between str.length and 3. And then what I can do, oops, what did I just do? That was my GitHub repository. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the front str.substring, and I'm going to say either len, comma, sorry, substring 0, comma, len. And you might look at this and say, well, is this going to work? And if we run it, it does. So let me explain to you what's happening. As opposed to using an if statement, what I've done is I've taken advantage of the math.min function, and you can do the similar thing with the math.max function, and I've taken the length of the string and three, because with this problem I want the first three characters. So if the length of the string happens to be smaller than three, then the len variable gets set to that smaller value. So when I do the substring, I'm only pulling out what's appropriate. So I hope this video helped, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.